What we're going to examine in this video will be how to build a porch overhang. This would be an overhang without any beams or posts underneath it. I'm going to show you two different or maybe three different examples. This example right here will use uh, some 2x6, some 2x4. The lumber might vary depending on what you need to accomplish. And this is an extremely weak structure. And one of the reasons why it's weak, and uh, I wouldn't recommend putting this underneath a window, for example, where somebody can jump out of a window. This is for a two-story house, obviously, not a single-story house, where if you were to have a window here, if you have a teenager jumps out of the window onto this roof over time, they might knock it over, I mean, uh, or put some damage to it. It's just not that strong of a structure. Um, you would notch the rafters like this and attach them to the studs. This is going to give you some uh, more support. And the you can nail a ledger to the wall. And then you're going to have your ceiling joist will go uh, next to the roof rafter to give it a good tie. And of course, the ones on the end will need to be notched like this. OK, this is one way. Here's another way, and this is basically the same roof, but shorter. This one's going to be a little stronger um, the farther you go out with the smaller slopes, the weaker it's going to be. So if you have something here that's two foot, um, it's going to be a little stronger than something that is three foot long. Same methods. Basically, it is the same exact roof except I moved all of the rafters and the ceiling joist back about uh, a foot, foot and a half. Same connections, same roof, like I said, just a little bit farther back. Here are a few things you can do to make it a little stronger. You can use shaped blocks and the blocks can always be a little longer at the bottom to give you a little more nailing, but there's no need for them to be too long. I would say uh, maybe two inches, something like that, three inches. Once you start getting to four inches, remember the blocks can split. So if, you, uh, if you're going to use a long block and you're thinking, hey, I'm going to get a good connection to some other type of a framing member, it could split if the grain runs this way. So I wouldn't make them too long. Now, another thing I used to do when I built things like these, these roofs would be to nail two by fours onto, onto the wall studs where I was connecting the uh, rafters to and I would run them all the way up to the roof. I stopped them here, but if you run them all the way up to the roof, you can see and you wedge it in with a, with a seat cut here, you're, this isn't going to, it's going to give it very little room to go, to, to move. And I'm not saying this won't move, trust me. This is too long of a cantilever to um, span to where you're not going to get any movement. As a matter of fact, I would recommend if you build something like this right here, roofing it off of a ladder, doing all of this stuff, I wouldn't recommend standing on top of it. You get on top of it, you will see what I'm talking about. Um, here's the shaped uh, wall stud. Another thing you can do is put another block in behind the shaped block, and this would give you some more support if you're going to. Um, put some Z-bar, some metal back here, something like that. This might provide you with a few benefits. One more thing I didn't uh, mention but I thought might be helpful is you could always put another shaped block back here. And if you got a little carried away, well, let me go back to the other scene here. You could always put another shaped block here and have the blocks going up or even put a 4 by 12 something going up and then run the sheathing. Take the plywood sheathing and run it into notch around the wall studs and then nail it to either the shaped block or the shaped uh, 4 by 10 whatever you would need use up here or 4 by 4 something like that. And uh, that might provide you with some extra support also. Shape block again. Another thing you can do is use 
um, some type of hardware like an, an A35, some type of an anchor, framing anchor to nail into the stud, nail into the stud and into the rafter for some more support. This type of porch extension is going to be a little stronger. We're going to, we um, sloped these at a 45 degree angle. Um, and don't, don't be misled. The framing members here might need to be four by fours. They might need to be a little stronger than a two by four, depending on how much weight's gonna be on this. A 45 degree angle gives us a nice, um, a nice brace. So this whole system right here, this roof is going to be stronger than the one I just showed you. Let's go through it. See the ledger. I'm going to go through this a little faster because I have another. You can see how it's braced up against the wall studs. I have the next section of the video is going to be the same roof with a little more bracing on it. Okay, here's the same roof. I went ahead and I added the fascia board. You can use the fascia board to straighten all of these. Um, you know, so you can start with a square one on the end and then nail these in place. Whatever the measurement is up here, just transfer it down to here. And uh, you don't really need to block something like this, but you can. You can block it for the ceiling or you can block it down here, whatever you need. And of course, you can block it at the top. Another angle there, you would just simply put the plywood on top of this and you would have a little roof. Let's remove those so we can look at where I added some supports here. And before I had a two by four ledger here, I went ahead and made a two by six because we're gonna use it for our braces. Another thing you can do is uh, if you have a situation like this, you can use a strap to nail the um, rafter to, or if you have a situation like this, I realize this is the outside rafter, but let's just say that this rafter is one of the internal ones and you need it to be, um, you don't have a good spot for it, you could always nail a two by four onto the edge here as a tie, something about uh, two or three feet long instead of the strap. I hope that makes sense. Rafters, again, tied to the wall studs. The ceiling joist shape, so for maximum nailing, you are going to want to put a few nails in here. If you, need, if you feel like bolting them, knock yourself out. If you want to run a uh, carriage bolt or something through here or a regular bolt, a nut and washer, I would say a minimum of four nails, two by fours we're using on this. And let's go back to this i would like to see at least four nails in here as long as the wood isn't splitting and remember if you have one on the end you can you can always double it up here but i'd like to see something like this you might just want to have a doubler on the end anyway for more nailing a lot of times corners need need a little more nailing um, if you tie it in when you tie it into the rafter this tie is going to provide you a lot more strength than this board right here, even if you put a strap on it. So I would recommend doing the corner something like that. And you can see here where I raised the um, ledger or the rim up um, instead of a 2x4, it's a 2x6. And I did that so that I could get a little better support on the corner here. So, uh, something like this is going to provide you with a uh, great support. If this um, support board um, stopped here, let's say at the point, that would be fine. If it went on top of this, that would be, that'd be fine. You could actually notch it on top of this where that would work. I put this at a 30 degree angle and Here's the top connection that you have. Um, something like this, you could always put a strap next to, or um, like I said, put another two by four on the other side to get this connection. I just wanna zoom out here, go back to here, zoom out. And this right here, I said, is at a 45 degree angle. This right here would be horizontal, perfectly level, a 90 degree angle off the wall. And these braces right here, I made them 30 degrees. Depending upon the length of the rafters, you could change the degree of the 
braces. And if you don't like this, this one right here, you might not even need braces. You know, if something like this is four foot long, you might not need a brace or you could always go with a two by six, something like that. Now, remember, these are examples only. Um, it might not work. I have built uh, these before and some of them turn out strong. Um, you can climb on them, jump up and down on them. They're not going anywhere. Others you can understand. If this, let's just say that you were going to make a longer one, you were going to go out farther, and you were going to be in the middle of the stud. This puts a lot of pressure on these wall studs. It could actually break them or put put enough pressure on it to where it's going to bow these studs. If that's the case, you might want to put a four by four in here. You might want to replace the studs. Or if you're building a new house, um, you might want to start with four by fours for something like this. Um, this is something that, that, like I said, will work if there's a reason why you can't put a post underneath it. Um, make sure you don't get carried away. Always seek the advice of a structural engineer um, for something like this. I definitely recommend that. And remember, these are examples. I am not going to be held liable if you guys do something like this and it falls down. You are on your own.